We're proud of all of our Duff commercials, but here's a very special one from 1960. I saw all the cool stuff. I didn't have enough time to go back and buy things, but I will. So it is just a sea of fun. people. Sea of people. Sea of people. Did you guys watch some of the Ahsoka panel? Cool, huh? Great reveal. Great reveal. A man never drank a duff in his life. When I think about Star Wars, I think about how fascinatingly bizarre the whole franchise is. What started off as a passionate, groundbreaking series of science fiction films has somehow turned into the biggest attraction for consumerism and woke political agendas. Is there a problem, people? No problem at all, Mrs. Kennedy. We were just discussing uh, ideas of what to do with the new Prince Eric movie. Put a kick in it, make her gay! Every film since the original trilogy, and even to an extent, the prequels by George Lucas, seems to expand upon the ideas of the first few films in ways that just seem endlessly pointless and without much thought put behind them. This is why when I heard the news of the new film being helmed by a director with no previous feature film experiences, but who has appeared to be hired solely because of her status as a leader in women's rights and being a female herself, I feel like it's only worth examining what is the current state of such a huge franchise and why has it captured so much attention. Um, I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> The director in question is Sharmeen Oban Chinoy, a distinguished Pakistani journalist and filmmaker whose work involves highlighting human rights issues, particularly with women. Her success as a filmmaker comes with short film documentaries, and in these works, it's clear that she has a great sense of purpose and narrative achievement with focusing on horrifying issues and troubling cultural attitudes within her heritage and country of Pakistan. From covering acid attacks on women to the practice of honor killings, her work has actually changed laws in Pakistan, as well as shedding a light to those issues most of us would not have known of. And I have no problem with this. But clearly, there is a big disconnect between someone who is a documentarian filmmaker and of short form content who likely has had very little to do, if not absolutely nothing, with Star Wars, and let alone science fiction films in general. So to be offered such a highly regarded role, to me, is somewhat strange to say the least. That's why I'm attracted to the promise of a new Jedi Order, and I'm attracted to the idea of immersing myself in a Jedi Academy with a powerful Jedi Master. A man never drank a duff in his life. On the surface, it seems like she is being hired solely for being a woman and an advocate for women in general in order to lead the new Star Wars film, which will star another prominent woman as the lead. And to give it the benefit of the doubt deep down, there could be an element of wanting to take a risk with someone who clearly knows the struggles of women. But still, it seems more likely that the choice to hire Charmin is based off this facade of political correctness. Any diverse woman in it, make it safe. But Mrs. Kennedy, ba Bambi's a baby deer. Fuck baby deer, put a chicken in, make her gay. The issue I have here stems directly from that and not because Charmaine is a woman. Instead of choosing to hire someone with any signs or experiences connected to the world of Star Wars or with science fiction or even fiction feature filmmaking in general, it doesn't make any sense that she has been placed into this world. It's being hired not because of your merit, but purely on how your gender and past actions can fit into this ideological mold of political correctness and to an extent, the feministic image that Star Wars wants to show. The world of Star Wars is neither of those, and it's strange to me to think of such a huge franchise as being conformed into politically correct ideological beliefs. I'm not saying you always have to cater to one's fan base, but when you have a franchise filled with fans who are largely of the male demographic, who importantly don't care much for ideologies, it's kind of puzzling to do a 180 on them. Which leads me to understanding why Star Wars blew up in the first place and why it still continues to be as big as it is now. Because at this point, there has been an untold amount of spin-off shows and movies that continue to expand the Star Wars universe beyond what I even think George Lucas ever wanted or had even conceived. In one way, I can see the positive side to this. That being the continuation of an interesting stories universe that is really a huge science fiction opera played out in different worlds and at various times. 
When you fall in love with a story like this, you can't help but wonder what else could happen and what it's like living in such a universe to begin with. The bad side, however, is that when you have too many cooks in the kitchen, this kind of universe doesn't really exist how you want it to, because things get muddy. Instead of an overarching creator who has put thought to every little thing, you get heaps and heaps of people coming in to add touches to one giant painting. Some areas of this are good, but some areas are bad. And instead of a cinematic masterpiece, you're left kind of looking at a picture that vaguely resembles something good, but that is largely missed opportunity. In the forest, when the, the lightsaber goes like this and flies off, I said, oh, what a great entrance, ah! Oh! <laughs> Ray caught it? <laughs> she hasn't even been to take up of her training! <laughs> What's the deal? When you have a group of scattered, divided, and largely different-minded people, instead of one author or a focused team of individuals, what else could be possible? As a caveat to this, I want to add that I have no issues with people picking up the mantle from someone else and continuing the journey started by someone long ago. There's obvious examples of where this can work, but usually these are the exceptions to the general rule because one, no one will ever be able to think exactly like their original creator, and two, People typically forget or do not understand the reasons why something worked in the first place. This is why I usually love content being made by the same person or a group of focused individuals. For example, in South Park, there's cohesion to the story and world that they know how to grow upon with what they've created before by evolving the universe in an intelligent manner. When you have people who are disconnected from the source and instead bring upon their own vision or ideas that may or may not fit in, then at worst you are opening up the floodgates for creating something that is likely going to miss the mark completely, or at best will frustrate your audience for coming so close and then falling at the finish line. Oh God. No. No. But ultimately throughout all of this, we are the biggest influences of this and we are our own worst enemy. The culture of Star Wars doesn't exist without us, and even though the latest trilogy was effectively a narrative flop, despised and debated intensely amongst the fanbase, it's also one of the most successful financially speaking, along with every toy and attraction the Disney Corporation has created from it. It continues to be popular, despite our hatred and criticism, and I have no doubt that it'll probably continue like that in the future given the results already and the choices moving forward. Unless the fan base or general populace changes, perhaps Star Wars never will either. And why would it? It has no reason to do so. My only hope for Star Wars is that at least it returns to its roots by offering future opportunities to the generations of filmmakers it once influenced, who adored and grew up watching the original trilogy and who have experiences in making science fiction stories. They are the people who truly deserve to carry the mantle of Star Wars because they are the ones who know why it was so beloved in the first place. The idea of Star Wars belongs to those people who love it for what it embodies to be. Stories about heroes, hope and noble human ideals. So if you can't lend it to those who deserve it the most, then just leave it as it is and stop. I'd much rather enjoy something short but good instead of something long but bad. There's... It's okay. Earlier this year, Fans finally got a glimpse at how gritty and dark Star Wars can truly be with the Disney Plus series Andor. Now, the cast and crew are looking back at how they crafted this story, characters and worlds that sparked a rebellion. And while there weren't any cameos from RX droids, like Gil, I can let this oversight slide. So, so long as we get one in season two, right? 
All right. Well done. <laughs> All right. Let's roll the panel. But you don't play that card, do you? Of course I play the woman card. Oh, you card. do? Hell yes! I wanted to hear I that. I mean, you're a South Asian woman. You've got of to play course. the woman card. There's a long line of men standing. Stand That's... to the front of the line. That... How can I stand if there's a hundred people standing in line? No. When you can play the woman card, you, will. you play the woman card. The damsel in distress. I mean, don't I look like a damsel in distress? The fact that you say that sometimes that you use that card is immensely interesting for me to hear because very few women admit to that. Well, you know, the thing is that um, you've got to play all sides, you know. If I need to stand up and, and face a man and look him, uh, look at him in the eyes and, and stare him off a little bit, I do scare Pakistani men off a little bit. Um, that, that I do, and I enjoy that power. You like being I, I, I enjoy that power that I can't scare him, and he kind of takes a back step and then looks away. Um, and then if I need to be a woman and, and be the damsel in distress, then I will be the woman and be the damsel in distress because we live in, in countries where you can do both. And I like that. I like the fact that somebody else is going to stand in line and, and, and let me cut in and say, please. Now, Billy D, there's got to be one story of you enjoying <laughs> shooting something in Star Wars. Anything? Come on! <laughs> <laughs>